Therapy Army, welcome to United Real Therapy. Big up to everybody. Love and light, liberation always. Free Palestine, free Palestine. Um, we say this, people. We've got a show, hell of a show for you tonight. We've got our Mr. Solskjaer spilling beans like he's running out of business. Literally spinning the beans, spilling the tea. Whatever you want to call it, he was doing it. So big up to everybody. Please smash the like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. But I'm just going to, I'm just having a couple of technical issues with my laptop. So I'll hand it over to Jarvis and Bumbaye to get through the first bit. So I hope you both, have you both seen the the doc, the, doc, the the interview on the overlap? Yes, sir. Uh, I was just, get, I was just watching it. I wasn't sure what we were discussing this yeah. evening you, you i, I mean late, we, we, we're gonna one, be discussing that I, I, get, I get i get the gist of it bro i know what he's saying yeah listen we're gonna be talking about it so it's not absolutely no problem we've also got um ineos apparently looking at, i actually like thomas frank but i'm not having potter or southgate as manchester united managers no chance uh but i like i actually like thomas frank i just like him there's something about thomas frank that i like his team always play they know what they're doing on the pitch. That's one thing when I notice about Thomas Frank, that his team know exactly what they're doing, win, lose or draw. They play the way he's engaged. So we'll talk about that. We've got all sorts of things to talk about as well. But big up to everybody. I'll let you guys carry on. I'll be with you in a couple of minutes, people. Love. Go ahead, Jarvis. Yeah, cool, cool. So uh, you're, you're stuck with me and Bumbaye, but that's okay. That's okay. We can do this. Uh, can't we, uh, Bumbaye? Yeah, of course we can. Of course we yeah. can. Cool. It's gonna cool. be. Uh, yeah. Bumbaye at the wheel. Tell me how good does it feel? No, <laughs> <laughs> you know that song. Oli. Do, Speaking I of do. Oli, so today there was an interview coming out uh, on uh, on Sky with the uh, with uh, Gary Neville and uh, the Scouser and uh, Roy Keane and all of them. And uh, Oli was there uh, talking about his time at Manchester United, both as a player and as a manager. Uh, yeah. It was a good interview, very relaxed, uh, and and he had a lot of say, a lot of uh, good knowledge and inside knowledge to talk about with the uh, with his time. So, so what's your impression? I know you didn't see the whole of the interview, but uh, what what was the gist that you got from from uh, what uh, the, they were talking about, Ubaye? Bad running of the club. Um, Haaland in 2018, he said, you have to sign this boy, he'll be great. Um, our scouting reports, we had them there, but we decided not to go for him. Um, Jude Bellingham was a player that came, but you know, I, I've said on a previous show, Jude Bellingham is an exceptional young man. Mm -hmm. um, he's got a fantastic head on his shoulders, the way he handles himself in big press conferences. You know, you're talking about, a young, you know, you know, a teenager almost, who is sat with the number five jersey, the Zidane number at Real Madrid. And if anyone wants to see um, the measure of Jude Bellingham and why people pay for him, it's not just the ability, man. It's the, it's, it's the person, personality of the guy. That interview is superb. But yeah, it just it just stinks of mismanagement, poor decision making for various reasons and. I guess this is a prelude, Jarvis, um, mm. to why I want to give Ineos the opportunity to get the type of people we're looking at so that we don't keep making these decisions. Otherwise, yeah. it's just the Glazers, isn't it? There's no, there's no change. Whatever Jim Ratcliffe is here to buy it outright in the end or whatever. But we need these types of people brought into the club to help mm. us make the right decisions about players like this. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Um, Tom is in the building. Uh, big up, Tom. Welcome to the yes, show. Tom. Nuruddin uh, is fixing his uh, laptop. We have, have a little technical issues, but uh, I will uh, take it from here until Nuruddin is back in a couple of minutes. So uh, how are you doing, Tom? Yeah, I'm not doing bad, guys. How are we doing? Yeah, cool, cool. So uh, did you see the infamous interview with uh, with uh, Oli today? I've seen clips and I've seen uh, meltdowns on Twitter, so it must have been something important. That yeah, <laughs> we, we can just we can we can just like uh, deep dive into it mm. and, and talk about specifics. And I, I don't know what Nuruddin has plans, but uh, we can. I, I would like to start a little bit about the Ronaldo thing. I don't know if you if you caught that one. Yeah, uh, because yeah. They, they talked about Ronaldo and, <coughs> and and how he in a way didn't back Oli um, the way he came into the club. Uh, Oli sanctioned it and said it was okay. 
he he uh, he said it was the right thing to do at the time, but uh, but in retrospect, uh, it would have been better if if it didn't happen. Um, mm -hmm. So so, what's your take on that, uh, Tom? Look, when we all um, when we first signed Ronaldo, we all drove into this fantasy that we had to sign him, so City did it. That was almost a fantasy in that moment because everybody was panicking, thinking that he was going to go to Manchester City. Um, I don't necessarily think all of what Oli said was true because, of course, there was the rumours that Sir Alex Ferguson had a major involvement in it and I don't think any of the guys on the panel um, in the interview with Oli, or Joe Scott in that case either, I don't think they pushed Oli Gunnar Solskjaer really for specifics as to, you know, was it that Ed Woodward above pushed for it as a sanction in signing based upon Cristiano's commercial value? Was it mm. Cristiano's profile was going to bring so many more numbers to Manchester United? Was it that he was the best goal scorer in the world? You know, did Sir Alex Ferguson have an influence in it? Like, they didn't necessarily go into specifics around it. And all Ole Gunnar Solskjaer just said was, look, um, he was the best goal scorer in the world. Um, in terms of development for younger players at that time, you had Mason Greenwood, you had Marcus Rashford, who could have, if you like, learned off of Cristiano and looked up to him and almost idolised him in, in many cases. You see the regimen that, you know, the the actual work ethic and, and stuff in training and yada, yada, yada. But look, I don't necessarily think the setup that we had in terms of the structure gave Oli much choice. And mm -hmm. we're discussing this story right now with Ten Hag where you know, who's in control of recruitment? Is it Eric? Is it, you know, scouts? Is it, well, we can't say director of football because we don't have one, but who is it almost that's buying the players right now and why we're being so, so badly failed? And I think in that sort of time, really, when, I, when you, I've watched certain clips in the interview where they're discussing about three players who right now in European football or big-time big football are massive successes in Declan Rice, Erling Haaland and Jude Bellingham, and we didn't sign any three of them, I think when I look at that, I can understand why we've gone so wrong when we did probably bring Cristiano in. Because mm. at that time in that season, we were in that third season, as Ollie already discussed, like we'd been a couple of games in that season and we'd actually started that season pretty well. Like We were blowing... Leads away 5 1 and, and stuff like that at the start of the yeah, season. We, so we, mm -hmm. we were playing quite well without Cristiano even in the picture then. So maybe in hindsight, if we'd have gone back and maybe bought in a younger striker or maybe somebody of a better profile than Cristiano at that time, in terms of who would last us for a lot longer in terms of value, kind of what we've done with Hoyland. Mm. this season, if we'd have done that with a similar player in that sort of time frame, maybe it would have ended a bit different. But I do feel like, I don't necessarily think it was a match made in heaven because I think Cristiano needs, what can I say? He needs a elite manager to work yeah. with. Yeah. He needs somebody who's been on the same level as him in terms of sphere. That's why I think what he had that relationship with Zidane at Real Madrid, I think it matched because Zidane had had that name in football. And I'm not saying mm. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer didn't. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer had the name at Manchester United, not necessarily in the world. Albeit he had a legendary goal for Manchester United. So you can get my sphere in terms of the two of them. And I know that Ole and Ronaldo will cross paths and, and things like that. But look, at the end of the day, I think, based upon how it worked out, Ronaldo was a success, funnily enough, for the rest of that season, even though he played shite for the whole season, he wasn't mm. a success in that first year. But, of course, we had Cavani as well, who, on the previous year, had played brilliantly for us as well. Yes. So, like I said, I think with, um, I think with Cristiano, it, it was almost the wrong signing I can, I, I can understand why Oli worded it the way that he did. It was the right signing, but in hindsight, it was wrong because it, yeah. was, badly, it was badly planned because they'd done a whole pre-season preparing to play without Cristiano 
And then a couple of, I think it was like a week or so before the window ended, they then decided to sign him. Something like that you needed to have done. That's that's the first signing you even do if you Mm. get Cristiano. But it was one of those lastminute.com, Facebook marketplace sort of sagas. And that's almost where we've fallen into the trap. Many a time where we panic buyed at the end of the season, we've overpaid and certain things like that. But no, I don't necessarily... um, I don't doubt Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's credentials with what he said. I think he's completely blitzed the whole mm. fucking football club. And I'm glad because we've heard it from Van Gaal. We've heard it from Mourinho. You will hear it one day probably from Ragnick. David Moyes. Ralph Ragnick. Listen, Ragnick's around the corner, mate. It, mm-hmm. These NDAs, when people think about when you leave Manchester United or a big football club, when you sign an NDA agreement, it only normally not only lasts about 18 months to three years and then after that time you can say and do whatever you want mm. but i think he was structured in what he said but um the probably and on the ronaldo question in particular i think they probably could have pushed him a little bit more for yeah. specifics yeah. that's yeah. the only thing but he said that he wanted the player and everything so i think they weighed it up from christian from what all he wanted as the manager Mm. I don't necessarily think that was the main driving force behind it. I just think the commercial power that Cristiano, his name, his brand, his face, his image rights, everything that he brought to Manchester United far outweighed anything that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's opinion warranted. Yeah. Because yeah. if, if Ole would have said no, let's face facts, Ole didn't decide if Cristiano came to the club anyway. They could have brought Cristiano with or without Ole say so. Mm. So, who's to say? And if we're looking at it from what he said about the other players that he didn't get, that he wanted, who's to say that they probably couldn't have just got Cristiano f- for Manchester United, yeah. whether he liked it or not? But but but, uh, but Tom, obviously, uh, obviously, uh, Sol- Solskjaer, as as he spoke, but he spoke <laughs> like he's very cautious. But but obviously, he didn't want Ronaldo. For me, I, I I saw it that way because he said something that he had strikers to play a certain way with uh, Martial, with uh, Mason Greenwood, with yeah, uh, Rashford yeah. on top, it was... and 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 Edison Cavani. So we had yeah. four strikers. Why would we even bring in the fifth with striker the play at that style, time? Yeah, with yeah. The, I can understand where he was coming from with the play style. And one of the things that I heard in one of the clips that I saw anyway, um, mm. he mentioned about when they had Cristiano in terms of possession it didn't impact um, the way that we played that much, which, to be fair, I don't think it did, based upon that we didn't have like a set style of play, r- realistically. And mm. that's where the, the theme of, you know, it's, you know, freestyle, it's, vi- it's vibes, it's this, that, the other. I could understand from the argument. But without the ball, it impacted you massively, based upon that Cristiano himself knows at the age of 37, 36, 37, when we signed him, to come back, that his legs are going to fail him, especially in the Premier League where you run so many kilometres per game and it's all about stats, it's analytics, it's everything, Mm. where he will get shown up by so many different players. But if we're looking at it based upon what we've actually seen in terms of when he was in that first season, statistically, the goals outweighed a really piss poor season by us. That's the only thing that we could hold on to for that season. Mm. But in hindsight, it set us back the actual two, three years that we'd even built up to that point with Oli Gunnar Solskjaer. And I think at that sort of point is where Oli would look at it maybe from his own perspective. I haven't watched the full thing, but in hindsight, I'd like to think in his own mind that he thinks, maybe if I didn't sign Cristiano, with the way that I'd built the team up for so long and we were actually building up something, he took us so far, it was either he tried to take us to the next step and he couldn't, or he was so, like Hector saying it, he was a low-level manager who didn't have the qualification to go the next step. So you brought you bring in the manager who can take you that next step and can take you to that elite level. But mm. Cristiano was never a... It wasn't a planned project. It was, like I said, it was a Facebook yeah. marketplace, lastminute.com. That's what it was. Mm. So, mm. yeah. Big up, big up, big up everybody, well. man. Yeah, have, you got, up, um, have you got sorted out? 
Yeah, sort it out, man. Big up, big up, Tom. I hope it looks a bit better. My camera looks a bit better, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it looks it's good. Yeah. Um, big up to everybody. Big up Therapy Army. Big up to all of you. Big up for Jarvis, Tom, Bumbaye for holding the fort. Big up Jarvis. Yeah, uh, I could hear a little bit um, what you were discussing in terms of the Ronaldo decision. I remember we were on this channel, people. I say it and I say it again. I was telling everybody and their nan, no, we don't need to get Ronaldo. We need two midfielders to help Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. We needed technical footballers that could replace Mac, Mac, Mac Fred. That's what we were talking about on this channel. We were not talking about Ronaldo. And I said, I don't give a damn if he went to Man City. Origin, so origin. what? Who, who did you have sat next to you gassing it up? Big up, Saeed. <laughs> <laughs> now, to be fair, Saeed was like, you know what? Now, to be fair, it was the. I think I was a minority in the fan base. I yeah. think there was everybody's like, we can't let him go to Man City. You know, that's we'll never let it that down. I, that's the first thing that I've said to Jarvis and Bumbay was that's what everybody thought in that time period was he can't go to City, so we have to buy him before he does. That's yeah, that man. was in that that was like a capture moment in that time, but it's yeah. bit us back in the arse anyway. Listen, at the end of the day, I knew what was coming because. Manchester United by that time, remember, I coined the phrase Simmer Frame FC. Do you not remember? We were buying all these old players. Well, this was like a retirement fucking home. So I remember I was talking about that and I was like, can, we can all see we needed midfield players. We didn't need a fucking striker like that. We didn't. We had Cavani and then we had two granddads up the pitch. Now, saying that, I'm so happy Ronaldo when he came, actually. He saved me from, remember, he saved me from the Europa League and got us at least go through to the uh, to knock out of the Champions League. So for yeah. me, those memories will live in the day when he scored the last minute winner against uh, Ferro Real, again, the last minute winner against Atlanta right. at home. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'll never forget those moments. Those moments were amazing. Mm. The stadium was that light. But if you want to be real, people, we did not need Ronaldo. We, Manchester United needed to build another team. But what I thought what was, what was very naive and he showed what Oli was, Oli was out of his depth. Let's be honest out here. Mm, Oli did yeah. amazing for what he was given. And obviously, all the constraints that were put on him by the Glazers, Glazonomics, they didn't treat yeah. him like a serious manager. He was just happy to be there. He's like a kid in a sweet shop. So they bullied him. They shaved him. They did all the things to him that they could never have done to Jose. Jose wasn't accepting. Or Van Gaal wasn't accepting. But Oli accepted mm. it because Oli's just there in it. He'll do anything for Manchester United. He's, nice kind of, yeah. he's like he won the lottery. Do you know what I mean? It's like he won the lottery. So... What happened was that, but the naivety to think that I actually agree with him when he said we, we couldn't play against the big teams defend anymore. We had to go up. But I'm like, Oli, so in the fucking summer, you go out, you get two, to add to your coaching staff, you get two, one really experienced coach that knows how to play this pressing game, that intensity, mm -hmm. and go and get two fitness guys. Remember, I was talking about this for fuck's sake. It's so unbelievable. I remember doing videos on here telling, saying that. Oli, go and get fitness, guys. Go and get um, coaches that have played the system that you want to play now. Mm. Go and get them. You know what I mean? Go and find mm. these guys. Go and get these guys. You're not going to do it with Carrick and bloody... Um, McKenna. McKenna, you're not. Because that's not we what, what, what the football... You were playing mid to low block, counter-attacking football. That's what you were playing. Low block against the big teams. Mid, mid at times, giving the ball to the other team and doing that. So he was not he was not ready. This team was not ready. And also, you needed to do the work in the preseason for it to come off. But then yeah. Ronaldo comes. Then he disrupts that all all the plans he had. For me, the best season was the lockdown where they scored 60 goals. Rashford, Ma uh, Martial, and Greenwood scored 60 goals. That was his height. That's the peak as he got. But Oli, to be fair, was honest and he said. He was asking them, listen, I need that next minute. You need to back me and then back me again. But he showed, I mean, you already touched on it. I heard you guys talking about it. Like mm. Hoyle, Haaland, Bellingham, um, Rice. Who else was it? Even though I didn't rate Rice. And I'm, I'm now realising what a good player he is. And that because not everybody I predict comes right. Not always I'm going to be right. Nobody's going to be right. But I didn't think Rice was good as he is now. Is good as he to put what he's showing for Arsenal. I didn't think he was that at that level, but fair play. Who else was it? So it was Hoyland, Rice, Bellingham. Who else was it? Or somebody else? 
Oh, he had a lot of players. He wanted to sign Jack Rillish. He wanted to sign Longstaff. Yeah. He wanted to sign Trippier. Yeah, you yeah. know a lot of these well, players. But in terms of the four that he mentioned, it was Hoyland, yeah. Bellingham. There was four of them. Somebody in the chat, let me know. Hoyland, Bellingham, Rice. Uh, somebody else. He, 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 Harry he Kane. No, 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 no. It's not Harry Kane. Somebody else. I forgot who he was. But anyway, the Hoyland one. I told you on this channel. I was telling you when Oli said get them. He set up a meeting, right? When when he was at when he was at um in Norway, he set up a meeting. And guess what? Ed Woodward and I forgot the, the Central European time is different. That UK is an hour ahead. They forgot that. So when they clicked on the link, nobody was there. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, this is what your football club is. And he begged them twice to sign Haaland. Ha ha and they were like, nah, nah, we're not interested. One at a time, he said it was, it was 20 million. The next time, it was 60 million. The most interesting thing was his little dig at Fergie when he was like, the videos would go around when he dropped Ronaldo. Ronaldo wasn't taking it well. And then he's like, the, the videos being shared from from, from Sir, Sir Alex going, you, your, your player, your best player has to play and all of this stuff. So that added to the pressure which, which mm. he was under. But for me, Oli... Talking about Matt Fred going, yeah, they were the, their legs, they would run for me. Nah, man. Nah. You were never going to try to play the football that you wanted to play to match the big boys with Harry Maguire, who you think is an amazing player. And what is delusion for me is absolutely delusional, right? And Matt Fred were never going to play that football. So I don't know where you got this from. I think at the end, you got fed up. You got, I personally think this, right? At the end, because he, they, the Glazers, the Glazers and this football club and these players literally do it to you slowly. They grind you down because of the environment. Because the environment is so toxic. It's all about commercial signings. It's all about big names. And Ronaldo was because of the names. When Ronaldo left, I think towards the end of last season, I think they were still sending out um, shirts with Ronaldo at the back still because people mm. see it as the prestige drivers that to get it from the club, to get it from the club printed Ronaldo, your name, you know what I mean, or whatever on the back. You know what I mean, shirt from the club, and they and they couldn't they couldn't keep up with the demand, mm, global mm. demand. So this idea, like that, was gonna work. I'm sorry, no, you panicked. You got all emotional, and at that time, Manchester United needed two midfielders and maybe another young striker. That's what they needed. Manchester United needed that. They didn't need Ronaldo. And I said it, and I kept saying it, and I was screaming the fucking house down, and everybody was calling me negative. Every everybody was calling me negative. Everybody, the whole world was calling me negative. So at the end of the day, people, I could see it. Majority of us could see it. What Ronaldo was bringing, Ronaldo, yeah, he's still amazing player, even though at that age, you know, I mean, 37, 36, 37, he was an mm. amazing player, but he wasn't going to solve the, the the problems. He wasn't. And Oli is interesting. So he gave an interview, if I'm not mistaken, was it Andy Mitten or somebody? like six or four or five months ago or six months ago when he said, yeah, somebody didn't want to be a captain. And everybody was like, oh, nobody wanted to be a captain. Then he changed it today. In that interview, he said, well, they didn't want to be captain for certain games. But still, and I'm like, yeah, if they think the pressure that I'm going to be trending on Twitter when the whole shit environment, and this is where I don't get with United fans. I actually agree with those players who said, nah, nah, you're not throwing me under the bus. You're not throwing me under the bus because... Everybody understood and knows. It's like Oli. The, here's the bit what Oli didn't say. This is the bit. Let me give you the context of what Oli didn't say, guys. Oli didn't say, listen, the club is a fucking shit show. It's all run on commercial. Everybody didn't know what the fuck was going on. These murder guys and all these other donkeys that are there, and Oli wouldn't even name them. You see it when they pushed him a little bit. He was like, there are different departments. No, they were bullying you, and you got sick of it because there's no money available. And he even said in the interview, he was like, guys, I can do this. And they said to him, even everything we said, people, every fucking thing we said, he said, yeah, top four is the thing, or you get the sack. That's what they agree on. So that was the what was the given, what was given, the direction was given to the manager is that top four is the given. Top four is the, is, is your target every season. And he said, Oh, I would have made it. No, you wouldn't, Oli. And the reason why he says that game, he felt it, is because by that time. Because there was no preparation done for this new way of 
man for man meeting them, mm. you know, fight, you know what I mean, coming out fighting. The preparation was undone there, so the players were confused. Do you remember in the in, in the Liverpool game? We were like, what are they doing? Are they pressing? Are they shadow pressing the players? And soon as the mentality of the first, he didn't build any mental resilience. That's that's the first thing you need to do to implement any style of play. You have to build a belief into that way they want to play. And to be fair, the majority of the players were like, listen, we don't want to defend. We don't want to just defend against the big teams. We want to fight. We don't want to be cowards. But he didn't do the preparation. Oli was like, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna fake it till I make it. And he knew the writing was on the wall. But the end is the way he's like, Oh, uh, I think I would have got them finishing four. <laughs> no chance, Oli. You literally said players were crying, the players didn't want to play for you anymore. You know what I mean? They were like, Listen, we don't we don't understand this fucking, we don't understand this, these tactics. You want us to play, but we're not pre prepared for this. And at the end, he got tired. He got tired of the club, and I think he took it out on the players. And obviously, these players don't even need that much encouragement. They didn't need that to fucking start throwing in a towel. They didn't need that much encouragement. But once they got their little thing, they were like, oh, okay, this guy's not the guy. So I think Oli did his best. You know what I mean? And I will always be mm -hmm. grateful for that. He came and did his best after Oli, after Jose. And this is what it pisses me off, Bumbaye, about you and the rest of the Jose fucking absolute, you know, like, this is story and like I just the level of his, his the history, how you whitewash the history. Like Jose stomped the place out. The 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 caretakers, the grounds people, the people at Carrington, the players, everybody was just like that, head down, head down. It was so depressive. And people are revisionists. That's, that's the word I'm looking for. Revisionist historians like Bumbaye, who are like, oh Jose, no. Jose took it out because the Glazers said to him, mate, forget your trophies. We're just chasing top four, mate. Get us top four, you keep your job. And he's like, nah, I want to do more and all this. And the Glazers were not permitting anybody to do that. So he took it out on everybody else. Took it out on everybody else. And at the end of the day, he depressed. The place was so depressed. More than anybody, I remember leaving games early, walking out of that stadium going, are you fucking taking the piss, Jose? <laughs> is this guy for real? And then Oli comes in, boom. Oli's like, I was only going to be there four months. And I said to them, guys, play football, play like man. And he says that, he says that famous quote he says about Ashley Young. Yeah, we're going to, we're back like Manchester United. We're going to be like Manchester United. We're not going to be scared about sitting back, defending, passing the ball back to the goalkeeper like Jose was doing. We're not going to do that. We're going to try to play a bit of football. So at the end of the day, Oli did his best. But Oli was not good enough. And after that four months, if Manchester United was a serious football club, he should have gone. And they would have got a proper football structure and got a proper manager. But they didn't do that. A proper coach. They didn't do that. They didn't do that. So there are things to me, while I say to you when you watch that, read between the lines. And read into the things that Oli wasn't saying when he was being pushed on. There's a lot of things he wasn't saying. And Ronaldo, yeah, yeah did disrespect him. Yes, Oli's like, no, I had a great relationship. No, you did. He, he disrespected you. I never forget what he did at Everton. He went straight down the tunnel. You know what I mean? What he was doing to the cameras, like, like mm. doing all his dramatics. It was all for show sure because it didn't fit the Ronaldo brand to be on the bench. You don't have mm. fucking, what, 100-something million followers on Instagram to be on the bench, do you? He doesn't fit that. It doesn't fit that you are on the bench with when you've got more followers on Instagram than majority of the Premier League's put together. <laughs> you don't. Mm. So to me, Oli said, Oli, I was reading between the lines of the things that Oli didn't say. And that's my two pence on it. I did think that, yeah, he, he said to me, it showed that I, it was really interesting that the club bullied him. They were like, this is what you got. That's what you got. You got to do it. You know what I mean? Go ahead and just do mm. it. And he was like, yeah. what the hell? And he said we had the fourth best squad, mm, did we? The chemistry wasn't there. And especially for me, what was so naive of Oli, to admit that to himself, he was like, we need to play like this without doing any of the homework. You get the fitness coaches in and you get the, 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 the specialised coaches in that can play like that. For example, let me give you an example, right? Real Madrid, Ancelotti, when they won the Champions League, that, that year they beat. 
in the in the in the winter break, they got this Italian expert of fitness and pressing. You see the difference when they beat Paris Saint Germain, when they beat Man City, they were pressing a lot better than before in the earliest rounds of the Champions League. Because he mm. got this guy to give them a new pre-season. And he saw that different structure of pressing, how they wanted to play. They wanted to play high octane football. So he didn't do it. Oli didn't do that. Then he, he sent them out there to play this expansive football where they're not being used to it. They were used to mid to low block. And they became better at counter-attacking than when, when Jose was there. So for me, what do I take from the interview? I take that that Oli was out of his depth. I think he showed that. I think I felt sorry for him because that's the Glazers. They actually disrespected him even more than the other managers. I, mm. That's the hint that I got. And by the end, yeah, he knew it was done. He knew it was done out here. He knew it. The players knew it. Go ahead, quick, quick question, Jordan. Did Did you pick up on the thing he said on Sancho that he didn't get to know him? Uh, he didn't couldn't assess him. He came back from from holiday. He wasn't fit, and he had an air infection, so he didn't train yeah. the first week. Yeah. What's that about? You know, if if you're a professional footballer, how can you come back after holiday and have an air infection and don't be fit? You know, it's your job to stay fit. You you get paid three hundred fifty million pounds or thousand pounds a week to stay yeah. fit. Well, that, well, 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 I think we was can that a dig it. against? But was, was that a dig against Sancho? I think the fitness bit. Yeah, he said he didn't catch up because he came in late. He came in mm. late because. For me, the ear infection can happen, illness can happen anytime, Jarvis, regardless even how fit you are. But the, the other thing that the, the actual, because he was in hospital for 10 days, he said, and that's a quite a long time actually to be in hospital with an ear infection. So it must have mm -hmm. been bad. But 10 days, you lose fitness. Do you know what I mean? You lose the, the fitness. And they should have maybe done a specialized program for him to get, get him back to that. But I think Oli was saying there, there were problems. There were problems with yeah. him more than the eye i think that's what i read into but it's it's about the structure around the club and if you buy a player how many millions did we pay did we pay 80 millions for sancho or something like that and and we just throw 80 millions out and and we don't do the preparation for yeah. him coming back it's, it's a little bit strange when you think of it yeah no 100 100 percent. to me i even told you guys i told you guys from my contacts like in in, here in manchester that uh, other clubs Players, when they come in, they get to do like a like a urine, urine sample, blood test. They look at all these different things. They look for allergies. They look for the types of food. They look for like all the different kind of... Manchester United didn't have that. Players are just allowed to come, eat whatever they want, do whatever they want. Because every, the thing about it, everybody gets paid. <laughs> Glazers get paid. They weren't running a club. Bro. The bankers were getting paid. The bankers were paying the players these wages. Everybody else got paid. Everybody got told, shh, stop, stay in your lane. That's what was happening. So, absolutely vacuous virus, a rot in this football club. And it all came from the top. All of it came from the top. And mm. Oli and the players have to, to be dictated by that without any proper direction from the top. Mm, I mean, yeah. the idea that, that Oli's coached this guy, Oli played at a high level, won a Champions League, that the lack of respect for him to say, listen, Haaland is an incredible talent. I've coached him, I've worked with him. And twice... Twice, he's telling them, "Get him, get him, get him," and they're like, mm -hmm. mm, "Fuck, like get the fuck out of here!" Yeah, yeah, yeah. have the scouting reports. That was his. That that yeah. was the answer. Yeah. So it to me, it's it's bullshit. When I look at it, I think the club mm. it shows you what they do to managers. They bully them, but especially him, because I think when they gave him the job. They realized how happy he was. He was, he was like a kid in a sweet shop. He did it. Bless him. He did say it. He said it's, the, it's his biggest dream. And he was just smiling, Mr. Nice Guy. And to be fair, I didn't want Oli to be a, a, a grumpy guy because that's not his nature. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. He just, if he would have had, if he would have coached another big club, had more experience, I think he could have come in and be, with a bit more authority. He didn't have the authority. Yeah. He didn't. And players took the piss. And Woodward was taking the piss. These anal these scouts were taking the piss. Mm. You got swallowed up in United, and and I and I tell people, I'm Manchester United. You need a strong men coach mentality. Three managers in our history have only won the league. Only three, and people are like, "What?" I'm like, I repeat for the people at the back. Only three managers mm -hmm. have won 
Manchester United the league title. Three. And I bet the, the, the quiz is, without Googling, who's the third one? We all know the two. Who's the third guy? I know it's early on. We'll be talking about one of the first news yes. and heat. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know his name now. Yeah. Well, that's where you go in the comments, people. Let us know in the comments. Let us know who's the oldest is. Oldest. That's a quiz for you. That's a quiz for you. The oldest. Who was the old? Three managers. Can you name the three managers that have won the league in this? <laughs> In this no, at Manchester no, United, no, no fucking, no fucking clue. <laughs> it's definitely not him, mate. Are you having a laugh? <laughs> uh, uh, Nesto Nank. <laughs> no chance. <laughs> That's definitely not his name, mate. There was no Ernestos in in Manchester at that time. But big up to everybody. Please smash a like on the video, subscribe to the channel. I'll go around. So I heard what you said, Jarvis, and I heard what you said from Baye, and I heard what he said, Tom, as well. I just sum up the Oli interview said that he was, yeah, he, I, I felt bad because I felt like, did he have him? You know what I mean? Did he have him? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no worries. Listen, Bombay, I'll go to you quickly. Um, I'll go to you while you, while you are there. Um, the reports are the short list of Manchester United managers from Ineos to replace Eric Ten Hag is Southgate, Potter, Harry Potter. And Thomas Frank, they're in the list. And the Serbi, the Serbi as well. The Serbi's in that list as well. Who is that the whole? Those four? Is, is that the whole list, or are these people that are part of a larger list? That's the four. Apparently, that's the four that's been leaked out. We're shitting, right? Yeah, yeah I mean, there not. you go. <laughs> Big up, Ma. Ma got it right. Ernest Magnal. Yeah. Mm. Ah. Yeah, he was one. He was the first one. Yeah, Magnal. I bet that was like 1990s or something. Some yeah. yeah. So, Nodin, no, what, what's the four managers again? Can you repeat it? The Three names? managers. Three managers. Southgate, so, uh, Thomas Frank, Harry Potter, and um, De Zerbe. De Zerbe. Okay, okay. Yeah, I, I, uh, Thomas Frank for me is, uh, is, a, is not, doesn't interest me. Um, neither does Gareth Southgate. The other yeah. two I'm open to. So you don't like the Serbi, no? I know what I just said was Thomas Frank. I'm not interested in. Neither am I interested in Gareth Southgate. Uh, the Serbi and Graham Potter, I would uh, entertain. Okay, if that's, that's the four that we yeah. have to choose from. Okay. Well, explain. Explain your reasons. There you go, boom. You got the floor. Well, Thomas. <clears throat> well, the Serbi for obvious reasons. Um, the 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 problem with all of these managers. Um, but if that's what I have to work with, then that's what I have to work with. But the problem I have, there's uh, there's a lot of inexperience there um, of managing. All of them haven't managed a club that is Manchester United. Yeah. All of them haven't been um, players of merit. All of them don't have experience managing high-profile players uh, and a squad like this that needs to be, you know, brought and read brought into regimentation. <laughs> Are you um, sure we've got high? high Sorry, Bumba. Yeah. Uh, uh, can you just repeat that last bit of sentence you said? High profile players. <laughs> yeah, you know, like, right, can I just no. wake you up? Bumba, wake up. Stop dreaming. We've got shit fucking players, man. <laughs> There's nobody no. that's fucking incredible. But There's you're nobody talking world about... class. We've got you're shit players. The Zerbi has what? managed, the Zerbi has managed players who are better than the players that we've got in our club at Italy. You're talking about players that earn um, a lot of money. You're talking about players that are We're not talking about the quality, though, but we're not talking about the quality, yeah. Because that's Manchester United. When you talk about a profile... Listen, let me, uh, let me just answer this. Listen, please just put this dream to the end. Zidane is not a speaker of English. He speaks Spanish, he speaks French, he understands Portuguese, he understands mm. Italian. He is not interested in the Premier League. He didn't come when he was a player. He's not yeah. interested. He said he wants to marry Marseille. That's his boyhood team. Or France. That are the only two jobs that he wants. So the dream is done over. He's not coming. Go ahead, Bombay. Apologies. We're not talking about... I didn't, I didn't use the word quality. Um, we do have quality players, though, in my opinion. Um, but we're talking about high-profile players that 
you know, can sulk, that can feel that they're a little bit special, that can look at a manager that walks into a dressing room, size them up and think, who are you? You know, yeah. you've, well, you haven't won anything. You've not even won a League Cup. You've managed Brighton. You've managed Brentford. Um, nobody in your team earns £300,000 a week. You've not even managed any international players or, or not that many. That's what you talk about high profile. You know, the car park's full. It could be full. I'm not sure how Manchester United are these days. It could have Bentleys, you know, and Lamborghinis all over the place. And, you know, that kind of thing. That's what you mean when you say a high profile player that plays for a massive club, is on huge money, has the exposure, has all of that stuff. Um, so if you get an experienced manager that was a player, you know, you look at these players and think you're all failures. You play for the best team in England. You play for a team with one of the hitch, <laughs> richest histories in the game of football and you are all, this whole ensemble, you, the whole club, everything about it is below par. So... This is the danger you have with these types of managers, that they will just get swallowed up and spat out. But I like the Zerbi football. I like the personality um, I, I would have him. I think any manager that goes to Chelsea, especially early on, is going to have a major problem with, you know, the amount of young, very, very young players all coming from foreign countries for big money. They Maybe they don't speak the language. Well, Maya, hold it there one second. Hold it there one second. Matthias. We're really, really sorry for your loss, man. Really, really sorry for your loss. What's really happened? Really sorry that you lost your friend at a young age. He just said no he's problem. replying to James saying he lost a friend when he that was unfortunately attacked. So we're really sorry about that. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Mumbai. Yeah, condolences, Matt. Uh, Matt House, yeah. man. It's, uh, it's that's that's a real issue that needs to be resolved. This epi pan epidemic of knife crime. But yeah, that's that's my gripe with these managers. I. I don't particularly like what Gareth Southgate's done. He he listened to me once in his life and decided to play five at the back with England and it allowed us to get a little bit further up the pitch. Um, but, you know, I, I don't think Gareth Southgate... It's, it doesn't attract me. I could be wrong. Uh, and Thomas Frank doesn't attract me either, to be honest with you. Um, I think Thomas Frank had a good first season. It's always interesting to watch a manager in his second season. Uh, that's what I'm finding. Ange Postecoglou is, is having a very good one. I'm very interested next year how that looks as well. Um, so for me, Thomas Frank this season, the Brentford that I kind of really liked, um, he's trying to develop them, but they're having teething problems at the moment. So I don't know if he's the guy for us either. But Potter, By the way, they've had loads of injuries this season as well. Obviously, Ivan Tony being banned, but they've had loads of injuries. Sure, Go ahead. sure. Um, but I think Graham Potter is, um, it, it, it's unfair <coughs> of me to judge him uh, going into the Lions' den for a team in the state that Chelsea are in. I think it's easy to have a lot of good players and they will get it right. It's going to need some time though, because I think they have similar problems to us in that Rooney spoke on the overlap, uh, the show previous to this one, and he said, there was an effective end of an entire culture and regime. The only people left was me and Michael Carey. And mm. we would try to keep the dressing room together, but it's not easy. It's not mm. easy because times are changing, players are changing, and it's just two guys and we're on our way out. I think Rooney wasn't there that much longer after we lost you know, all the elder statesmen along with the manager um, and that team that worked with the manager. So Chelsea are having that and they're all new players as I say trying to settle in from abroad you know not all of them maybe speak the language it's it's very difficult um so that's why I don't judge Graham Potter too harshly at Chelsea and I would entertain him but they're not exactly on my you know what my go-to's but that's that's what I think of that list hmm. yeah go ahead go ahead Tom so what, what were the names again, guys? Southgate, um, Southgate. No, Oli Gunnar. On this channel, we know him. We, we listen. We know him as Oli Gunnar Southgate. Remember that. You got you got <laughs> Southgate. No, 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 no. Oli Gunnar Southgate. Oli, 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 that, that comment. From Harry Oli Potter. Potter. You got, you got Oli Gunnar. Right. Harry Potter. Deserve. Oli, Oli in a waistcoat sounds a lot better to be honest with you. <laughs> Whoever put that in the comments. Mm. So we've got Oli, Oli Gunnar Southgate. We've got um, Zerbe. Potter Plus Frank. and. And, and Harry Potter. Okay, okay. Um, 
Um, well, I won't. I won't want Gareth Southgate. Um, I won't touch my barge pole to be honest with you. Um. um what about if he wins the Euro? He'll def- Ineos will definitely no, do no, no, no. Well, if he wins the Euro, it's good. I'm mate, ma- I'm mark every, my word. Mark my word. No, 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 if he wins the Euros, I hope that they keep it. I hope England keep him. But, <clears throat> look, I think with... Um, I think out of all of them, I'm not a, a massive fan of Graham Potter, to be honest with you. The only thing is, I like the way that his Brighton team play, but... I just think he'll get swallowed up with the culture that is Manchester United. That's the only thing that I'm going to say. I just think the weight of a big, 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 a big time football club, I think he's going to struggle with. And I don't necessarily think it's just at Manchester United. I think, look, it could, it could go to Liverpool, it could go to City, if Pep leaves, if go to wherever. And I think he will struggle. I think he is that manager who, if, for example, Southgate left England, I think the FA would look at him. I think if maybe Newcastle didn't hire Eddie Howe, they would have looked to bring him in at that point when they looked at Eddie Howe. I think he's on that sort of trajectory. I don't necessarily think he will. He, he warrants a massive, massive club. And I think if he did get that opportunity again, I don't necessarily think he would be successful. But the only thing that I will say in his defence is, Chelsea is an absolute shithole and everybody who's gone there has stunk the place out. Players, owners, managers, everything. So I can, to a certain extent, understand it. But the two that interest me out of all four of them, to be honest with you, uh, is Reserve Bay and Thomas Frank. Now, again, I'll say the exact same thing to what Bombay was saying. They would not be my choices. I would personally look at the German market. I would look at Andy Flick or... Nagelsmann, if, if I was in control of the operation, based upon the way that I like fo- to watch football. But I like the Zerbi's brand of football based upon it's open, it's expansive. But the problem that I have with the Zerbi's football is it's either you batter a team or you get battered yourself. That's my issue. Because I've seen Brighton whoop teams 3-4-5-0 or high-scoring games, or like what happened when they went to Villa, I think it was 4-0 down or 3-0 down in like 20 minutes, and he refused to change it. And then I think they ended up losing the game 6-1 or 2 or something like that. something stupid anyway. When they got all the way through, it's still trying to play the same way. So that's the only thing we deserve. I like his football. I think charisma-wise and actual integrity, I think he's a bit, he's a, he's a character. Put it that way. I think he's a character. Um, and I, I don't know. There's something about him that I just like in a in a weird way. And I've got a similar sort of trajectory with Thomas Frank. Where Thomas Frank, he's not a massive name. He's not a name that, like Bombay said, none of them, if I'm being completely honest with you, are names that get you off your end of your seat. But we've been for managers who do do that. We've been for big names, Mourinho's, you know, Van Gaal's, we've been for history managers and experience and everything. But maybe we need to take a step away from winners or, you know, with massive CVs or decent track records and just go for somebody who's worked in an environment which is similar to what, say, maybe Ineos is trying to set up, which is about positivity, performance, analytics where I think Thomas Franks worked in the exact same environment at Brentford. Brentford are arguably the, one of the top, you know, bottom two lowest budget clubs in the Premier League. They run off of data and analytics when they recruit players. And the fact of what you said in reading about these had a lot of players injured. Yeah, he, he has, to be fair to him. But the way that they play, especially in the front areas, where it's so compact, it's so aggressive, with the pressing, with the style, we all saw that game when we lost to them 4-0. That was rad dogs. That was man for man, clattering to, clattering to every single player as soon as they have the ball. It was aggressive. It was adventurous. And the one thing that we lack, especially in our sort of game, with any manager is we've always fallen short with set pieces. Set pieces, drop balls, we don't score enough corners, free kicks, anything. This guy 
is a mastermind at those sort of areas. Get the best out of every single area when you have the ball. But also the one thing that I like with Thomas Stank especially is he evolves his tactics. If something's not going well in a game, he changes it. That's the thing mm. that I think gives him more character for me than maybe De Zerbe. When De Zerbe was 3-0 down at Villa, he did fuck all about it in 20 minutes. Whereas if Thomas Stank's 3-0 down at Villa, I think he does something differently to either try and get back in the game or he just limits it and, sh and shuts the game off so he doesn't get embarrassed. That's the thing that I like about Thomas Frank. That isn't, for me, if I pick out of all four of them, I would go down the road of Thomas Frank. That's just my opinion. That's just my preference. You know Based the funniest thing, Tom? Character. You know the funniest yeah, thing, Tom? I knew you would like Thomas Frank. I don't know why. <laughs> no, no. I genuinely no, knew I, you would like Thomas Frank. Him, no, no, did, no, did. When he first no, came no, hundred percent. No, no, listen, when listen, he first, I, listen, when he first I, came up, everything what you said is hundred percent. No, I've watched yeah, games when, with when Brentford. <laughs> I've, I've watched him and I've seen him make changes. I've seen him games that they lose tightly. And you know, but, yeah. But yeah, to me, I, I think the Serbi, I think the Serbi has got it in him. But I think he's tried to make his players understand. I think he's that kind of arrogant coach that when they're losing, he's showing his players. Listen, he's still yeah, got to yeah. do the, the fundamentals. But let me just say, yeah, big up to Aidan. I'll come back to you. Hold your thought there and I'll go to Jarvis quickly. So he says, YouTube taking the fucking piss. Couldn't even see the live on the subscription feed. Get the like. It said, this is what it is, Saeed. Big up to Saeed and Mandem. Saeed, people are asking, man. Listen to the people. They're asking me. They're saying that I need to be the latest recruit of the Mandem. <laughs> so let people are telling me that, that I need to come <laughs> to the Mandem show. So yeah, let, let, let's see what happens, man. Send me the link in it. We'll see next week. Big up to everybody. Love and light, though. Listen. Go ahead, Jarvis. I want to know who your pick is. So with Thomas Frank yeah. with him here. Do, do the super chat. The Serbi, the Serbi or, or he said the Serbi or or Potter. Because I know he likes Potter. I know that Bumbay has done some research on Potter. New mm. history of Potter, yeah. So big up, big up to the super chat. Big up to Barton to on TV. Plus, stop hating on Southgate. He's class. <laughs> 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 Go on, lad. Go on, son. Yeah, Go yeah, ahead, Travis. Yeah. yeah, okay. I, I see it from a tactical uh, view, as always, and, and thinking about how we can utilize the, the squad we already have. And if we take that into uh, perspective, it would be Thomas Frank that would be the most suited mm. manager because of his style. He plays a 4 3 3 in uh, in possession, it, it goes usually in into a 2 3 2 3 formation. And he don't play with this inverted fullback stuff, and 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 he keeps the width with the with the fullbacks. It's about the overlaps and crosses. He sets up wide triangles when he drops uh, to to uh, to help out with the build up. He drops both midfielders down, so it will ease. It will be easy for the players to understand what he's trying to do. He play with pace, power up front, and Buemo and uh, Ivan Tony and Visa. Mm -hmm. And, and and this is this is very similar to what we have been used to in Man United earlier years. Um, direct, and stuff like that. So so direct. so I, yeah, direct football. Uh, and he doesn't dilly dally with a lot of possession. He stretches out the team so it goes fast when we go out in attack with Thomas Frank. So in a way, what what I don't know about Thomas Frank is his man management and can he handle a big club? So that worries me because he haven't. United is not the stepping stone. You you can't go from mm. Brentford to Man United, and that's the ultimate problem with Thomas Frank. Uh, so for me, Southgate is a big no, uh, basically because I've seen how he done with England. So much talent, and and this is what he he get out of that team. He could have get, gotten so much more, be so much yeah. do, more dominant. He should have won at least one tournament uh, up until now, uh, but he hasn't. Uh, mm. Potter is uh, is a good tactician. He has a very similar, I would say, a similar style to to Ten Hag. But for me, maybe the one I I want is the Serbi. Um, but worries me with the Serbi is we know his style. He likes to play set up traps and and mm -hmm. and he keeps possession. But he, he keeps possession and then go into transition and counter attack. So it's a very strange style but i think he's been figured out by the other managers in the premier league uh, and uh, i'm a little bit worried that he doesn't have a plan b and doesn't know how to change it up and mm -hmm. i think it will be extremely found out in man united especially with this group of players because we don't have the yeah. ability to and the technicality and the brains to play 
his type of football. So, mm. Just on that, Jarvis. Just on, just on that, Jarvis. I'll ask you a question with that. But I fundamentally you, disagree, by the way, and I'm going to make the case for deserve. Yeah. If, you, if you, if you, if you, what, with what you just said, was deserved, right? Hmm. But if he came to Manchester United, do you think he would try and evolve the way that he plays based upon his taking the massive step up? From what he's yeah, used to. yeah, yeah. I think he will. He will. He have to do that. But I haven't seen him change up his game. Uh, it must be said that Brighton has been hammered with with uh, with uh, injuries, injuries this season. They mm -hmm. had ten uh, first team players uh, out yeah, both in, Brighton, in, in, Brighton in early Brentford, December. Yeah, yeah Bright, Brighton, yeah. Brighton, and Brentford, but Brighton too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and Brighton have lost all of their key players with McAllister, Casado, uh, Robert Sanchez, the goalkeeper, and they haven't really replaced them with with players at that caliber. So. Um, for me, but I would take the Serbia. I would really like to see what he can do at Man United. Okay, let me make the case for the Serbia. I like Thomas Frank. There's something about Thomas Frank, like I said, like Tom Tom yeah. said, there's something about Thomas Frank in terms of when you watch Brentford that he understands exactly what's going on. He stands on the touch of the, you know, <laughs> on, on the touchline, chewing his gum. Like that. Looking at his note. Telling people where to be. So there's something that the energy that he brings. Mm. Having to see him at Old Trafford when we played against him, watching his body language actually, how he is. And he's a mm. fighter as well. And I think I think Scandinavia has produced some brilliant coaches, especially mm -hmm. for the national teams and stuff like that. True. And I think yeah. it's about time that somebody with his experience, because he's got a lot of experience as well, with his experience, with the money ball system, the way that our players are analyzed, I think he'd be. He'll, he's a man manager. I think he gets the best out of players. I think that's one of his keyest things: is man management, right? Yeah. He's he's, a, yeah. he's he's got this charismatic nature to him. You know what I mean? He's funny. He's mm. honest. He's direct. Yeah. You know what I mean? And and that's what he is. So of course the jump is going to be huge. But for me, let me make the case for the Serbi. Okay. Go on. Go on. Uh, er, er, I am going to make this case for the Serbi. What about what about Southgate and Potter though? First, get them two out of the way. Go on. What about them two? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're not feeling it's, it, it's though. <laughs> Listen, if Southgate was to come to this place, there's over 200 of you people, and we've not even got 100 <laughs> likes. It's a shame. Bumbaye, let me come in. Let me come in. Bumbaye, who did you choose? Are you he there? Potter, didn't he? Potter. Did you say Potter? He said he Potter, yeah. Yeah, yeah Potter. I, I, um, I, I'm... made a case for Potter, yeah, because you know yeah, about I mean... Swedish... It's the <laughs> thing. Like, it's is going to give you the football that you want. Yeah, that, that's, you know? that's, that's, that's that, what that, I'm that, talking about, baby. Tell me about it. The Serbi, yeah. the Serbi is a guy who literally on the training ground tells you where to stand, how to receive. But let me make yeah. the case anyway. Only going to Southgate, no fucking chance. I promise you that there'll be riots at Old Trafford. Even if he wants to Euro, there'll be riots at Old Trafford, right? Uh, <laughs> Uh, have, uh, I think Graham Potter needs to get another job to come up again for the big job. I personally believe that. I think he needs to get his confidence back. I think he needs to get a job, a mid-level, a mid-table. Like, like, for example, I think Graham Potter will be a fantastic manager for West Ham. If they were to get rid of David mm -hmm. Moyes, I think he's got a good group of players there. I think he can do his coaching without having the massive pressure. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I've been a, a mm -hmm. I think to come back up again, I think once he's... When, badly wrong. And I do agree with you, Bombaye. It's the club as well. It is yeah. Chelsea bringing these like 40 uh, it's, players. It's like a good shout though. Players on the what books. you're saying about West Ham. I think yeah. West mm -hmm. Ham are at a point now yeah. with the team that they've got, if somebody like Potter was to take the reins from David, maybe mm. they can develop that. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Go, 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 go back to Brighton. For me, go back to Brighton listen, if Deserve goes. Listen, yeah. he's the perfect coach, I think, for West Ham. I think West Ham mm. have a bigger budget than Brighton. Mm. I think he's the perfect coach for that, personally. That's what I would pick. I'd pick a yeah. job like that to bring them up to maybe fighting in the top seven, six. And then you then go up for the bigger job. Mm. But, yeah. this Zerbi, guys, I can't tell you guys enough right, about this Zerbi. Right. I, yeah. Brighton are my favourite team to watch outside of Manchester United. No, 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 no. You said every Spurs game they play, though. right? So Spurs, I watch Spurs yeah. and I watch Brighton. <laughs> Purely mm. because of the football. Yeah, we yeah, lose yeah. or draw. Get hammered or not hammered. Honestly, I'm touching shit to you. Because I know it's certain things. Jarvis, he changes tactics 
in the space of five minutes, like player boom formation, he changed the formation. But you're mm-hmm. like, what the hell is he doing? What the hell is he doing? This season, you can't judge him. Like you said, they lost their best players, and yeah. then they've got the next batch of players to acclimatize to the Premier yeah. League and England. Yeah. yeah. And then he's had the biggest, one of the biggest injury lists in the Premier League this season. They yeah, and it's, it's like, it's, it's like yeah. Mitoma, Estubian, yeah. and all of the best players yeah. are injured. Yeah. That's yeah. yeah. the biggest problem. So, like that, and yeah. he's also fighting on two Going fronts. Mars. And when the club has been used to just planning for the league games and the cup mm-hmm. games here and there, then playing in the, in the Europa League with all that flight flying everywhere. I can't tomorrow. Well, I'm yeah. going to try and watch that game tomorrow. Jenny want to try and watch that game, at least catch a half tomorrow, Roma versus Brighton. So the point I want to make to you is this. The style of play of who he is as the, as, as the manager, for me, he plays... His overlaps are the craziest overlaps that I have ever seen. He plays this positional football where the passing has to be so fucking good. I, I can't tell you enough, guys. The passing has to be so good. The drills that he does in the training, I send you the article. I read the whole thing about it. It's on the mm. Brighton website. I, like, <laughs> on the Brighton website. I'll put it in the chat so people can have a look. Right, like how, like he literally is is play by play on about how he plays football. Right, play by play. So they go about one on one theory, the one or two in my setup, the use of the third man. Right, in theory, in my setup, get out wide, <laughs> in my setup to get to the half hard spaces, uh, in my setup. To bomb the box. He calls that, you know, when he overloads, he calls to bomb the box. In my setup, variation, more control. Honestly, the way, what, how he talks about his game is unbelievable. But basically, mm. what his main thing is possession based style of play, high pressing, emphasis on quick passing and mm-hmm. movement. He seems like they literally is a very fluid attacking system. He I plays mean, interchanging positions to create space and overload. Opposition defense, that's what it's about. Dino. That is what, and I'm sorry to say, that's the type of football Fergie used to give me sometimes at the top of high on Manchester United. That's what it was. It was possession passing game. Yeah, yeah, I need to, uh, last word. Um, yeah, nice one for having us on. Big up the therapy army, big up, big up you guys. Um, you give me four names there, you put them all together, they don't come close to Uncle Antonio. That's the guy you need. <laughs> Keep wasting my time on these shows. Keep wasting my time with that Southgate and Deserby. You know I mean? Listen, Deserby, someone said something. Hector Rico said something that I was thinking a little bit. We said the same stuff about no, no, we didn't. Ten no, Hag. we didn't. No, we didn't. That's a lie. That's yeah. a lie. No, we well, didn't. Uh, we'll no, we'll we see. Didn't. You know what I mean? No, might... no, we didn't. Hector, I'm sorry to say, but we didn't. We did not. They're two different. Disturbing is a compulsive obsessive. Do you not understand? It's like a All right. thing. I'm going to leave it's you to obsessive it. Cons- Look, guys, it's the obsessive compulsive. Good night. Big up to you, Bombay. Take Big care. Up. You can't follow him on social media, I'm afraid. He's only, he's only contracted to this channel. Big up, Occasionally Bombay. loaned out. Dreams. <laughs> it's either on, on, on Lajory on Jarvis Corner as well. Yeah, yeah. Check yeah. him out on there. Take care, people. Big up. Take care. Big up. Um, uh, no, he, they're totally different. I'm telling you now, they're totally different. One of the biggest things what I love about this Herbie as well, that he believes players not getting fatigued. He'll change the whole back four with a new back four, and they know the system. He'll change the whole midfield with another midfield, and they know the system. Yeah. He'll change the attack. He doesn't rely on specific one or two players. I mean, Gross has literally thrived to the next level. Gross looks like a world-class player. <laughs> I swear to yeah. God. Some yeah. of the things that Gross is doing at that club, right? He plays, yeah. Gross plays as a right back at times. Sometimes as a CDM. Sometimes as a right winger. Sometimes as a number 10. He moves him would, all over would the place. Would he be able to do, Nurdin, Nurdin though, would he be able to do that at Manchester United? question like, yes you know what i believe the, if he changes concept, the whole let me give team you the, let me give you the pathway uh, yeah. let me give you the pathway he either has to have 
a, a season where Manchester United finished ninth with no European involvement. Yeah, yeah. So literally in the training, he'll get have all the preseason to put his fundamentals down. And mm. the thing about it is that players enjoy his football, and he teaches them something so much that they're like, wow. He shows them the and they're like, wow, yeah, I get it now. They buy into it. They buy into this his style. I'm not bigging him up, not making him up, but I'm telling you, he, because he's so intricate. Apparently, mm. he speaks, him and Pep Guardiola are speaking weekly. They're, they're on the phone to each other weekly. And that's yeah, why yeah, I'm yeah. like, I don't need him to go to Man City. We need to get him before he goes to Man City. I know. Um, yeah, because, I was, it, because yeah. Jarvis, because Jarvis and Tom and the audience and everybody else, the family, the community, 30 p.m., we've been told by Ineos that they're going to have a football structure. He will thrive under a football structure. His yeah, job is yeah. just to coach the players, prepare them as the first team coach, bring them to the matches. That's it. Do the press conferences. Anything else at the club, go and speak to the director's football, speak to the owner, speak to the CEO. And he's, an he's, an on, I mean, he's an on the field coach too. He's, he's with the player every every practice every in day. his football shoes yeah, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and actually participating why, in, in the training. That's but, yeah. I like, listen, but yeah. I like the fact that he's a hothead. I like the fact that he gets yellow cards because I like things like that. He's, he's Italian. This is what it yeah. is for me to yeah. play this type of football since since, since um, the great AC Milan team with Fulet Van Basten and Rijkaard. Erigo yeah. Saki, remember Erigo Saki developed that kind of like coaching. He's obsessive yeah. like Erigo Saki. If you know about Erigo Saki, you know about Erigo Saki yeah, yeah, yeah. with the it's, ball, without yeah, the ball. Like he was so obsessive. He was a, he's a mania. He's a mania for perfection, a, yeah. Catenacci, yeah. I think it's called. Yeah, yeah, can I, yeah, that's yeah. what I mean. Yeah. He is, he is a, he's a genius, honestly, he is a genius. But that's, you have yeah. to have, for me, the level, you have to back him. And when he falls out with players, he falls out with players, by the way. He's like, mm. Fuck, you know, I'm not asked. So mm. he's, a, he's, a, he, 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 to me, one thing what I love about him, he doesn't have favourites. When I look at, I think everybody, yeah. the, the substitutions, and it, to me, I've been so deprived of that. I've been so deprived of that. Now, saying that, These players need to go. <laughs> the Serbia is a good coach, but it's not a fucking miracle worker. I'm concerned. Maguire though, gone. Yeah. Scott McTominay yeah. gone. You know what I mean? Bruno can't hold the ball gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rashford Nuridin, only Nuridin, Nuridin. Gone. This is what I'm saying, though. This is what I'm saying. I'm concerned that if he comes in and he does what you say, like when you just said that he just drops it with a player. If he doesn't like the player or they're not doing the demands of what he wants or he doesn't think that they're going to fit in, He just completely drops that player completely and just exiles them almost. We're in that sort of situation right now where we've exiled Ronaldo. We exiled, well, we basically exiled Sancho. There was murmurs around with Varane and Casemiro and certain players that Ten Hag has dropped them or left them out in phases. Marcus Rashford, we've pulled him in and out of the firing line when he's been out on the piss or whatever and stuff. I'm just concerned that if he does, you can do that at Brighton and you can get away with it. But if you do that at Manchester United with two or three players, like Ericton Hag's done, you can suddenly find yourself on a fight where those two or three players have strong connections with five or six others in that dressing room. And suddenly a quarter or, three, or you know, nearly half of the dressing room might not be with you. And that what you said, I understand that. I completely agree with you when you said that the one-to-one -one sort of basics training where he's, where he'll stop a complete training session. I've heard these stories before. Uh, mm -hmm. One of my friends, has pre uh, previously anyway, spoke to um, Adam Milana, who currently plays at Brighton Football Club. When he spoke to Adam Milana, he said, you know, what's um, De Zerbe like in terms of, you know, training sessions and in terms of progression and that? He says that we'd be doing like a high-performance tactical session. And if he doesn't like something, he pauses the whole session. He'll stop the whole session. He stamps yeah. his he, he stamps his feet around. He goes mad, based off of this. And th this was one of the things that used an example when Adam Lallana said to my friend was that um, he can't he couldn't remember what I can't remember what player he said it was anyway. They'd stop the whole training session based upon a defender wasn't in line by the slightest millimeter with his fullback. That was the, that was the mm. whole training session stopped, and he said, "No, we're resetting it." And they go from the goalkeeper all the way to the opposition box. 
And if you don't, do, and if they don't do it within, I think it's like seven, um, seven or eight seconds, and have a shot on goal, you you start a whole game and you reset and you reset, and it's almost like maniac training. That's the way that they say it. <laughs> it almost fries your brain, cooks it down to the point where you're at boiling point. That's the thing that I say though with Deserve and Thomas Frank though. Yeah, they are in the position that Graham Potter was in at Brighton, where they probably arguably deserve to have that step up, that chance to go to a yeah, big yeah. club and bang. Potter, Potter right now hasn't established himself or he hasn't put himself back on the map. He's damaged goods from what's happened at Chelsea. If he goes somewhere else, maybe gets himself back into a bit of a positive swing and everything, we might have a mm. conversation. Ole Gunnar Southgate has done nothing in club football. He's not done anything. He's been at Middlesbrough and he, I think he got sacked at Middlesbrough. Look at Darwin. Darwin's laughing. Everybody's laughing when you mention I, I can't remember. Hold it there, Tom. One second. Let me just get this super chat. Big up Nura Beats, but the guy who does all the graphics. Brother, all love with the super chats, man. We always appreciate you. He said, I don't understand the respect showing towards Roberto De Zerberi. You know what I mean? Mm. He, said, like, he, says, he says it there. Big up to you, King. I appreciate needs, you always, man. He needs a man. platform, though, Nurudin. That's the thing that I'm saying with Deserve, mate. Like what you said about the structure. If we're going for this structure where it's about where the, the people above are going to recruit properly for yeah. him to, to, yeah. to set the style, yeah. if they're going to go for that style, it's very specific because it's yeah. based upon one set style. You can't go out in European football and say that there's a manager that plays like Deserve, mate. Because yeah. like you guys said, it's about when he has the ball, it's fast transition, it's up the end, it's fast flow football and go for it. Overload. So the biggest thing for me is the way they I'm play out. You I swear to God, there isn't the way they play out, out Brighton, the way, they, the way they play through teams, the way they give, even if, because the, the quality is not there in terms of the players. So, of course, they're yeah, going to yeah, get yeah, beaten yeah, by course, better quality. But the way that he, he goes up against the big teams, man, he, what he does is unbelievable. But the chances the, that um, they create, listen, yeah. the chances that they create is unbelievable. But big up, he says, Stephanie Griffiths is lured in as a top salesman. Listen, I'm <coughs> saying this with the biggest caveat. The biggest caveat is this, Stephanie, is that seven or eight players have to be gone. Mm. Athletes who yeah. can run and pass the ball, pass and move athletes have to be bought in. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> For him to work, no, you, I've can't, never, um, you can't I've never, work with the players yeah, that have got rid of Oli, the players have got rid of uh, Raniak, the players mm. have got rid of getting rid of Eric Tanak. He can't, he cannot, he yeah, cannot. Yeah. These prima donnas with big wages have to be cleared out. Let me, let me ask you though, Rudin. Yeah, let, let me ask you though, anyway. Let me say, let's let's you, one, oh, one yeah, second, go on, go on. Big up. Stacking the manager would take a lot worse um, to pay for a million pounds. Listen. I don't care. I just don't see even fucking passing. The players, to me, yeah, yeah, yeah. and whatever's happening, is the players are throwing... I swear to God, I feel like towards Oli, the end of the days of Oli. That's what yeah, I'm feeling. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. he gambled. I told him not to chase fucking four trophies. I told him to develop a fucking style. Drill the team. Make them fucking play to the way you want. No. Instead, yeah, you yeah, chase, yeah, yeah. and now you're paying for Eric Tanad, and you're yeah. a fraud. Yeah. He frauded me. I'm sorry he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He didn't have to do this. Everybody understands he couldn't have to do this because he could have used the excuse of playing every three days, and he could have used that and said, listen, we need to develop a play down the fundamental. Then he came out at the beginning of the season and said, oh, I can't play the football I played Ajax. So why the fuck are you bringing Anthony then? Why the fuck are you bringing yeah. Anthony? No, nah, man, I'm not having it. Mm. At the end, of the, day, yeah. at the end yeah. of the day, I just see him and think, okay, Eric Ten Hag, you can't even give me even passing. The players are treating the ball like hot potato. And they keep mm. playing again and again. Bring the fucking kids. Bring the fucking kids. And people will back you, especially at home. Mm. Big up uh, Nora Beats Football and us. Like I said, the brother who does all of the thumbnails <coughs> of all the graphics here for this channel. So big, big up, up to my brother. Big up to him. He says... um, Roberto De Zerbri, hands down, is the best manager to set up team play through the press. It, it's time he gets an opportunity, a big team. I hope he doesn't go to Man UFC. Look, you see mm. what I mean? He's a Liverpool fan. Apparently, he's on Liverpool's list as well. Yeah, he's yeah, on yeah. Liverpool's list hey, as well. Yeah, 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 he's yeah, one yeah. of the most wanted. Barcelona as well, apparently. He's on Barcelona's list. Well, if Nuridin, Pep... this is, yeah, yeah. If that's what I mean. This is what I was mm. just going to ask you, Nuridin. In, ter in terms of, like, Forget the four shot, the forget the four man shortlist that we're on about now. If you had your own pick, and I'll put it to both of you anyway, you and Jarvis, you have an open, you know, contact list. Who, who do you phone up? 
You can pick any manager in the world. Within reason, who, obviously. Who you got? Who do you get? Who, who would I get? I, I would get Jurgen Klopp to piss the scouts or stuff. No, you, I've just said be serious. <laughs> Go on, be real, be real. Well, who do I get as the manager? I, you know what? I'm sick of it. I'm not expecting anything from any of us, um, other than maybe a couple of personnel changes and maybe better recruitment. But I feel the Glazers have the biggest owners of the club. They still are the biggest shareholders. Mm. Joe Glazer mm. is still in charge. So for me, I'm like, I just need six, within six months, I want to see good football. I want to see what Ange did to Spurs. I want that football. Win, lose or draw. Because I know we're not, Mm. We're not. Uh, we're not going to be there to challenge for the big, big, the, the big trophies yet. So I just yeah. want good football. Mm. That's what I. I don't know what the fans want. I want a manager that's guaranteeing me. So who's going to give you that? What manager? This derby you, you... will give me that. I okay, think this derby so, will so, give so, me that. So you go because you know what? Listen, listen. This is how much Eric Ten Hag has made me paranoid that I don't <coughs> want anybody coming from anywhere else. Because I'm like, mm. they don't know the league. We know the league more than them. You're in Norway, Jarvis. You know the Premier League better than fucking Eric Ten Hag would ever do. Because he wouldn't be doing the same mistakes, repeating mm -hmm. the same bullshit mistakes yeah, weekly, yeah. weekly. He wouldn't yeah. be. Because well, basically, Ten Hag, Ten Hag is trying to reinvent the wheel, trying to find something new, to uh, expansive yeah, football, yeah. and, and, and yeah. it doesn't work in the Premier League, and it's been found out, and that's a big problem, and he can't adjust. Go that's on, Jarvis, a big anyway. Yeah. Let, 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 let me just get this. But, oh, listen, going, big up real... Putty talk, yeah, yeah, big up to you. He says, Norodin, have you heard of Chris Paul that speaks to Serbia? He said, after Pep Club, Ancelotti, he's the best manager at any top team. He goes to the hope and we can get them. Yeah, well, I well, I hope. Like, I'm not seeing that, but I've, I've, I listen, I've read loads of different things about this Serbia. Like I said, mm. I absolutely mm. love Brighton last season. Brighton were my favourite fucking team. The way they played, <coughs> because, and I won't mind, these are like guys who played in League Two, in League One. Some of these players that Brighton have got, it's the good players from that league or the championship, or they come from abroad, they're just making mm. their football. Like, mm. he, he works. And like I always said, there's a book called, if you want to understand football, actually, yeah. about in terms of the data, read the book called Soconomics. Soconomics. And it says yeah. that there, it explains it. It's easier to coach younger players because they haven't got, got downloading information on them already. The young mm. brain... When the manager shows something, they're so enthusiastic, they learn a lot faster, quicker. And I think Manchester United needs to clear out seven or eight players, bring in seven or eight new players. It deserves it. It will only work like that. It will yeah, only yeah. work like that. In terms of like, you be you will be opposite to Ten Hag. He'll make changes. He won't just stick to two. You know what I mean? Of course, he's got his first team. But if they're not doing it, bam, see you later, rotation. Yeah, Everybody yeah. like loves uh, uh, Ferguson. No, it's another manager. They worship Ferguson, I think. Ferguson, no. They're like, listen, the Brazilian guy can play as well. Welbeck can come and play as well. You sit on the bench. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? The rotation. Keep Because to play his football, you need to keep the players fresh. You can't overplay them. Yeah. Because yeah. he already does too much in training. So that's where yeah, we're at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, I'll throw it to Jarvis like I did with Unerud anyway. You have an open contact book. Go on, give me your... Give you no, 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 I was just thinking while we were talking about the, the, the Serbian and it fascinates me the way he plays and I agree with you, Nora, and I think you're spot on and, and mm. you know, he's, he's the type of player that actually could could work at Man United, but I think we need to recall a lot of the players to suit his type of style. I think we would have to recall, for example, Pelestri because he needs wingers who can dribble, can take on a man. Same with uh, with uh, Amadialo, probably would, would fit into a the Serbia system. Uh, I think a lot of the players will will uh, be moved on, especially the the, the defenders. I think Onana mm. will fit perfectly in the De Serbia system. So I think a lot a lot of the foundation is already there to to bring him in. But uh, as you said, we need to. But but the problem with the Serbia is we need more quality because it's easy for him when when the opposition press and go high because then he can yeah. he can play traps and and play the the, the transition counter attacking football after the possession based when when he drags them up but when we are up against um, lower low block, uh, low, low low block, block teams yeah. then we will struggle because we don't have the quality today so we That's need extreme quality yeah. as manchester city in a way and and that will take time so if if uh, the Serbia comes in we'll probably do good against the the Good teams and bad against the bad teams. And that's just the way it is. And will Man United fans and the board and the structure have the patience with the Serbia? Because it will take time. 
It depends on, yeah. But I genuinely do think he would adapt as well. I think he would adapt. He will know because... He, That's what he, I was just going to say. Obsessive. He knows. He will know how to break down where he's got he's at. to. Have, he's got to evolve in terms of if it goes wrong. Like he, every manager, and whenever, whenever they're at a club, they have a couple of three, four, five games. It's a bit rocky. It's a bit messy, and they don't necessarily mm-hmm. get the results or whatever. If it gets to that point. He needs to evolve. And that's why I said t- before with Jarvis, if he took that step from Brighton to Manchester United, where Jarvis said that he felt like he got fa- he's been found out a little bit by managers, if he comes to Manchester United and he gets found out in terms of the actual style or in terms of the way that he prepares for big games or whatever, whatever it is mm. anyway, will he evolve? He, has he got the capability to evolve or create something new like that? Or does he need that bit of time, for example, like a pre-season or something, so that he has the time away to come up with something new and then he can reassess for a new season? But at Manchester United, you don't necessarily... You're not guaranteed that time unless you show, A, the fans something to buy into, which, as you said, Nuruddin, good football, (coughs) or B, you don't show... Or you show the club something, which would arguably be you get into the Champions League and potentially maybe win a trophy. That yeah. that buys you a little bit of credit, or into and until you get to that sort of stage or point, we're not going to see that. But the thing that I will say with Deserve anyway, guys, is he came very close to getting to that FA Cup final against City. We only mm. beat them by penalties, arguably. Yeah. And in that in that in that semi final, I'll be honest, we played shocking. We mm. played absolutely shocking. Remember, the game we, made some amazing saves. We jammed it, yeah, we jammed, we jammed it, mate. We completely jammed the whole game for, from minute one to minute 90, or 120 anyway. But <clears throat> it would deserve it anyway. That's the thing that between him and Thomas Frank, out of the two of them, he is that hot head. He is that character. And we, if you're going to be Man United manager, you need to have that. That's mm. the only thing that I think separates the two of them out of them. Me, my preference, like I said, I think Thomas Frank, in terms of the actual per- the person, the sort of character, we need somebody who's going to come to this club and who's going to not necessarily be what like Ollie was, where it's a little bit you know too nice and, and this, that, the other. You need somebody who's going to be firm but fair with the players based upon how the season has to progress and you have mm. to play good football. But out of the two of them, they both have that character and they're at that stage with both of their clubs where they're almost pushing above the way. Yeah. Frank's at that money ball club and Brighton's in the situation where they've progressed quite well for a club of their nature or stature. Because a couple of years ago, people probably didn't even know where Brighton was on a map. Mm. So mm. they've built the brand of their football club very well through playing good football. But the thing with Deserve is, <clears throat> if we look at it out of the two of them, if, if we look at that, Frank and, and Deserve, eh? that's the we, the thing that concerns me is that there's arguably three, four clubs that are looking for managers right now in football: Barcelona, mm. Bayern Munich, Liverpool, and potentially Manchester United if they get rid of Ten Hag. One of those four clubs, I think, will go and get Roberto Deserve. I think one of those four will get him if the, if if all four of them look for managers. I think most of them. If Ten Hag will go to Bayern, I believe. We'll have we'll have all of them. Yeah. What? You think, I think he'll he go might Bayern? do good there? He might because yeah. that club is stable, and they will buy into him because he's already been there. By fair the way, enough, I don't want Nagelsmann. No, I don't. I don't want any manager outside of the UK. The only guy that I would take an opportunity guy is the guy at Girona. If I'm gonna go for anybody abroad, I'm yeah. gonna go for Michel. Like, Michel. Michel. Yeah. I will go for Michel. You know, Hans, 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 and Hans, that's still a risk. And that's still a risk as well. That's a mm. risk. But but I want to say, Nuruddin, uh, just Go just ahead. to uh, chip in when when it comes to uh, to Thomas Frank and De Serbi, that's two different directions. And now yeah, we yeah, have yeah. Uma Barada in, and and the direction they choose is what we will get with this structure for the next he probably would, ten years. Um, so for me, would, I would, yeah. yeah. Hey, do you, do you oh, think no, that no, he no, would, no, no, let, let him finish? Path. Let him finish, Jarvis. Let him finish. No, 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 it's okay. It's okay. Just a comment, Tom. No, I was I was no. just going to ask you the question. Though. Out of the two paths, which do you think Omar Barada appoint you towards more? That's what I was going to yeah. ask. Yeah, the thing is, I believe they will go for this Serbia because of Barada and 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 his connections with okay. the Man, Man City and the way he wants to play football. It, the the Serbia is more of a Spanish style of manager, but the, 
Thomas Frank is like, as we say, he's German and or or Danish. And uh, is it German or Danish? He's Danish, I think. Thomas. Danish, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, but you know, it's a Bundesliga type of style, a little bit similar to Ragnik and Klopp. And I don't think we, we will go in that direction, to be honest. I think we will try the possession based football. But we got to remember when it comes to the Serbia, his foundation of the club was already there when uh, because he took over after Harry Potter, as, as we said, and they play similar type of possession style football so it was easier for him to get it going of course so, it was so a big question mark is we don't know how long it will take for him to get the well, team working well the, the big thing for me is that i think that's why i'm saying to you the players who can't play pass and move who can't keep possession who can't know yeah. positioning who haven't got the leg they need to go they need to go they need mm. to go so we can't just get him and expect that he needs seven eight players to be bought in that can play yeah. his system you need that yeah, but, yeah, but that's that's three years that's three three uh, no window. no no but i think if you get rid of seven you can bring in at least six if you get Shikoko, a lot. if you get Shikoko. and then you get two more in january if you move strategically jarvis it can yeah. be done people go yeah, people but you don't gotta remember january. it's 50 percent success rates when well, it comes to, through, to, to, guys, to transfer so you gotta double yeah. it for it yeah. to to be functional no 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 but with him you know exactly what style it is jarvis yeah. You need younger players that would, would, would are more impressed by him and more will buy into it. So we're talking about people who are looking for their second contract, Jarvis. No, first off, first big contract. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Contract. yeah I, I, exactly. I know, Lorraine, but exactly. what I'm exactly saying is what if, Rani if said, eight players, yeah. we, we probably need to sign 16 players. And that's no, but what I'm saying to, no, no, but what I'm saying to you, I think if you can get six, right, in, in you can get two in mm. January. There's no way you can't get January. People are like, out oh, of January. Yeah, proper planned football teams will get players in January if they need to. Big up, yeah, big, big up, Nurabi. Listen, him, bro, so. you don't have to send any super chats anymore, bro. Come on now. I've I've, I've heard really good things about Amrion too. Amrion, is he the... He's the... Sporting guy. Manager. Is he Sporting or Porto? Sport, sporting guy, yeah. Is he Sporting guy, yeah? Yeah, you know the guy, guy, guy with the beard and dark hair? Yeah, yeah. You, he, I think he's, he's quite young as well, I think. I don't think he's that yeah, yeah. young. Yeah. Mid thirties or something. Yeah, they're playing football. They play. I mean, Arsenal are going to roast them next week, but you know what I mean. I'll, I'll be, I'll be shocked if they, if Arsenal but, don't score mm, a couple mm. of goals against them. But, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Tom, did you hear that the, the Nice manager? I think the Francesco uh, Farioli, I think his name is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Work with the, the Serbi. He was like he his. Did, yeah, he was, he was yeah, 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 disciple. Yeah, yeah, he was a disciple. Yeah, what did yeah. he do? Yeah. Uh, so uh, they Shakhtar, have a connection Shakhtar, there. Shakhtar, Shakhtar, yeah. correct, yeah. And Sosuelo, was he out there with Sosuelo as well? I, I think he was. Mean. I think he was as well. But like we were just discussing now, guys, in terms of... By the, the way, guess where Nisa? Nisa fifth now. Are they? <laughs> yeah, the fifth. Oh, well. Going down. They're going down. <laughs> anyway, but no, in, in terms of the whole remit of the squad, guys, like when we were just saying if you what, if we need players who can pass and move or, or whatever and <clears throat> with the overlapping system that De Zerbe would want to use. If we go through probably the remit of the squad, he'd probably like a goalkeeper like Onana, even if it's just for now, because he I will be able him. to play for the think back. He's a, I think he's shit, but go on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If, if, in, terms of, in, in terms of here and now, I think that would be one of his last concerns. Maybe more long-term, he'd look to get rid of him and bring in who he would want, maybe. But in terms of credentials, he'd rather have Onana than... For example, buy in there or whatever. I think he'd like a play like Martinez, but he would probably buy another centre half. I think we would all agree on that. I think he probably would. Um, Shaw, sure, I don't think he would. I don't think he'd fancy him. He might use him for here and now, but I think he'd look to get maybe move him on or get somebody else more longer term. I think he'd like a play like Dillo because he overlaps. He does. He, he's quite good at overlapping. Um, Cobby Minor, I think he'd be. I think he'd love him. I think he'd love that. Brilliant passer mover, can hold the ball up from five, six players, avoid tackles, dribble. You have be, to be comfortable on the ball to play in the It'd be his mm -hmm. perfect midfield. You have, to be, midfield you have to be able to take care of the ball. And it's not even that. You have to move quickly. You have to play. That's, what that's I mean. one of the Intric things I love about him. Bang, bang. Honestly, it's like, yeah. it's like bang, 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 bang. The triangle. <laughs> like, and the, and mm. the thing, the difference is that Ten Hag's totally different. With Ajax in the Champions League, it was slow. It was moving yeah. teams. It was going left, left, going right, bringing it back, going across. No, he yeah. believes bombing, bombing the box. He calls mm -hmm. it. The, the amount of 
that when they go one side, the other side they create so many overloads, so many people in the yeah. box. That's, weirdly, that's, we, that's weirdly not, though. Remember weirdly. with Fergie. Remember with Fergie. Everybody will run into the box. The ball will go out wide. Everybody will get in there. Mm. You know what yeah. I mean? We would all, especially the last twenty minutes, ten minutes in the game, we need to win at Old Trafford towards the Stratford. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He plays that rock. It's, it's like a rock and roll. Rock football. and roll it football. Is. Yeah, it mm. is. I mean, no, I mean, Nuruddin. Even, even in saying that, weirdly, I could honestly seem liking a player like Mason Mount just based upon he he gives that energy. He will give him those legs through the midfield. McTominay, to a certain extent, maybe based upon he's phys- oh. he's a physical player. Oh. And like, listen, you no 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 don't start backtracking now. You've just been saying about bombing into the box, mate. No 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 no. Don't Tom, start backing down. I'm now. sorry, Tom. <laughs> I swear to you. Players who can't control the ball deserve his like terror. What do you mean? <laughs> have you have you seen him in the opposition box? One touch bang in the back no. of the net. He'd <laughs> be his favourite player. Loves the, the, lo, lo, he loves the bounce bounce pass, but he doesn't yeah, love bang, a bouncy bang. pass. It doesn't. It doesn't love it's a, a lucky pass. It's a difference. That's why pass. McTominay won't be there. <laughs> you listen, no, McTominay, but yeah. McTominay, Maguire. These two do not have the feet to cope with the quickness of passing. He's going to need to. He's going to need to buy. He's going to need no to... chance. No. No, not no. for me. No. He, no. he will be. He will, I swear to God, he will. He will embarrass him and stop him off in, after fifteen minutes in the game if that's. Mm-hmm. He'd the ball. buy a new. He'd buy. I think he. Pick. I think he would buy a, a new one to be. He, he, the thing that I, I've seen with Deserbi anyway, he likes a. It's almost like a player. That I think he'd love. He'd love like a James Madison, who's controlled, disciplined with the ball, can play through the lines, break the pass. Uh, break mm-hmm. the press, sorry. Players who are, have got that sort of remit about them, I think he'd enjoy. Rashford, I don't know. I think Ahmed, a, oh, Ahmed would thrive on... on, on Ahmed, Ahmed, Ahmed and Palestri, I think, will thrive. Really. Rashford, I think, is a bit of a 50-50. Because if he doesn't... I think, like you said, we've deserved, right? It's about character as much as quality. And if he doesn't like Marcus Rashford's sort of character or attitude, you know what thing? What you know what he will do with Rashford? I'm not going to lie. You know what he will do with Rashford? He will improve in the ways where he does it. Where other than losing the ball, he will tell yeah. him. Like, you know what with Batoma? Attack the guy. Go inside. Go outside. He will tell him that he would. He will He's get him. Though. He, he will discipline him down. in some way. He won't be he like you walking around and all that shit. This shadow pressing that Marcus. Yeah, but you need technical yeah. dribblers. Mitoma, Solimars. Well, that's they had what Rossard, was, that, yeah. They had Yeah, they had brilliant yeah, dribblers. That's, that's that's well, he reminds me of Solimars. Ahmad, Ahmad reminds me of Solimars. Ahmad, Ahmad mm-hmm. reminds me of him a lot. And to be honest with you, in some ways, Nuridin, I can see what he could do with Garnacho. Where we've discussed this before about in terms of disciplining him, in terms of coaching. Break the game down for these younger players so it's simplistic for them. When you do something wrong in the training, stop the whole thing, remit with the players and just say, right, Ahmad, positionally, you shock him. Absolutely shock him. Three cent- you, need, you need to be five more yards closer to the centre forward. You need to be direct. You need to be in this area in the box. You need to be wherever. Right, whistle goes, bang. No, right, Marcus, what are you doing? You need to be in line with where Ahmad is on this opposite side and... Delo, where the fucking hell are you at? Harry Maguire, you're, you're supposed to be on the halfway line. Like, in terms of discipline, mate, I think a lot of our players have struggled with the small, and I'm, I'm going to quote Eric Tanagi, the small margins in terms of tactics. They struggle, they struggle to understand. See, he's it using Oli language. He's using Ollie I'm using language. Tanagi language, mate. <laughs> no, but Oli, he copied Oli. Oli was saying the same last moment. Oli's yeah. 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 I, I, yeah, I have you a get, question. You get what I mean, though, don't you? In terms yeah, yeah, of break it, break, breaking it down for the players. But, I think they're better understanding. Would you get would you get Anthony going on, no, the, no. on the right wing? <laughs> no, he likes guys who are direct in a certain way, who are technical to a certain extent. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe one year of coaching, one year of like developmental. He yeah, can yeah, do yeah. certain things on the football. Something pitch that different he agrees for with. it's something I can understand what you mean, Jarvis. Okay, it's something different for Anthony. I think if Jarvis, if you play, he, he will improve you. I think Deserbi will. I would trust <laughs> Deserbi to improve you. And you're a, you're a perfectionist midfield. Player. Oh, I'm too old, too old. But uh, maybe in my days. Do you play five a side, Jarvis? Do you still play five a side? Ah, uh, not anymore. Not anymore. Is it no. knees? Is it, where's where's the knee, the ankle? What's going on? Nah, I'm just lazy. I'm just lazy. I don't have the time. <laughs> 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 I swear to God, if if I, did, I, I had four knee surgeries, if if my knee wasn't the way it is, I would play. 
I'll play yeah, for the seventies, yeah. sixties. Yep. Yeah, I will play. When you have kids, to be fair, it becomes really difficult. Yeah, but the thing is, I'm 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 fine now. But when I start playing again, I will feel you know knees, back pain, ankles, you name yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you have a good physio and you do good yoga and stretches, like gigs, eh? eh? Yeah, gigs I'm a good play. I never I do. Think I gigs never do played... stretches and yoga. Nah, you need to, Travis. No. You need to. Remember, gigs that gave gigs another ten years of his career. Yeah. Really? Yeah, no, nah, I'm not getting giddy. Listen, I'm giddy of a coach that can come in. A big up ratchet. I'm giddy of a coach that can come in and make just make me just go to Old Trafford and just watch overloads and chance after chance creation. Whether it's Liverpool, whether it's City, whether it's Arsenal, just going toe to toe. That's what I want to see. I want to see. I don't want to see dull. I'm. Se- I've had 11 years. 11 years of fucking mm. eyes bleeding. My eyes bleed. I go there like that. And start. <laughs> <laughs> I start, start getting that, you know what I mean? A, a, a spoon and digging out my, my eyes. You know what I mean? But I'm just like, what the hell? What the hell hmm. am I watching? Honestly, some of the stuff that I'm watching. I'll tell you, you will thrive under his system. Diego Dolo, I think he would improve. I swear to God, he would improve a lot of players. He would improve yeah, yeah, a lot yeah. of players. Well, yeah. you look at what he did with um, Esther Pena when he first got there. Um, the kid, he didn't know a word of English. He didn't even know. Um, he wasn't his best position, left back originally. He was always Estrubian a, a um, yeah. Estrubian. He was yeah. yeah. He was a um, I think he was a wide back or something like that. With how Villarreal played anyway, but especially under Unai Emery, he struggled as the pinier, based upon he didn't know where his best position was on the left because he even tried him as like a left winger at one point. I think Unai Emery, but uh, the problem with Estepinia was he wasn't a great crosser of the ball. He didn't. He couldn't cross the ball to save his life. But what De Zerbe had done was he'd simplified his game so that he could link up more with Matoma. And it was a case yeah. of don't put balls in the box with Estepinia because he can't cross to save his life. But if you dra- if you drive a partnership with uh, Matoma, you just let Matoma go one way with one player because mm. the fans of the ch- Matoma fancies his chances one on one against any player realistically, a defender yeah. anyway. That's yeah. that's the that's the side that on that side anyway for Brighton, but we're gonna have to see guys anyway because of yeah, course yeah. we're not we're not Big getting up. giddy we're not getting giddy. listen we're not getting giddy Pick up Just Stephanie get... Griffiths says no more Luther Pandros football <laughs> 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 you know you know <laughs> if you know who Luther Luther Pandros was you know you know me no more Luther Pandros football listen some people are happy married after 60, 70 years mate what are you talking about fifty years. People are in the nineties that have been married for almost seventy years. It depends. Depends if you meet certain people that you connect with. You know what I mean? Mm. You know what I mean? Big up those who are getting married, but make sure you know the person in it as much as you know them. And when you when you fall out of love in terms of like that type of like lustful love, make sure it's somebody you can have a friend, you know, you know, somebody yeah, yeah. who you can be there for each other and have a laugh. Sense of humor is big, honestly. Sense of humor is big in all types of relationships. All I know is that the relationships I've had, if the, if the, if the, if the humor is there, I'm a madman. So to go out with me, I'm a madman. It's not an easy thing. <laughs> so, so, Can't so I think you think, I'm not neurotypical, am I? I'm not neurotypical, am I? <laughs> I'm not. Confessions, you know, therapy confessions, mate. It is what it is. But you know, you know the rest anyway. But yeah, you need to get with people that that's it. You need to get with people who understand who like you or when you are your maddest. Yeah. That's what you want. That's what you want. Big up, he ain't easy. That's it, two pack. He ain't easy. Listen, I like to say big up to man like Bowley. Bowley 77. And big up at Tom Journalist one as well, man. Big up to Bowley, Jarvis Corner. Is it Mondays? Monday, Monday, yeah. And nine o'clock. Make sure you catch him there. Hopefully, maybe next week I'll be properly come on there and I say hello. If it's not something, yeah, that will be happening. fantastic. Uh, yeah. Fingers mm. crossed, I'll be on there. Even though I do like three hours, that'll be that'll make it three hours of podcast. But <laughs> you know what? Fingers crossed, I can come. I can come along, and say show my face. So big up to you, Jarvis. Big up to you, Tom. I hope you're. Your body is adapting to the crazy Nicoleness 
that is back in uh, in man you know what i mean in england cold england so yeah i hope uh, you're doing well and um yeah wishing you all like a good week people good good rest of the week and a weekend we'll be back tomorrow night for the match preview for everton everton, everton which yeah. is a big game huge there's a huge game for everton hag <laughs> And for me, Eric Ten Hag has let me down, man. I I swear to you guys, you know me. If Eric Ten Hag show me the team can keep the ball at least, hmm. I'll be on here defending him to the to the hell to the last minute. I'll be defending him to the last day. I'll be yeah. defending him. But he's not showing me that he betrayed me. He betrayed me by chasing Europa League BS, playing the first team against Reading and these teams in bloody Moldova and Cyprus. Nah, mate. And he said he doesn't do it in the coaching. He doesn't want to rotate either. He no. wants to play through two players. No. Deserve he plays through a system. <laughs> it's about the players. It ain't about one or two players. Yeah, man. Listen, Tupac, what a legend. Yeah, 100%. Tupac is a legend. Free Palestine, Congo, Sudan, and anywhere else where people are getting oppressed in this world. Big up, mm. Lilas. Listen, there's 200 of you in here. Please, on your way out, smash the like, subscribe to the channel. I'm really yes. tired and I'm here. Me and Jarvis are doing this this time for you, bringing you A1 content. This is what you're guaranteed in this. I'm not going to agree with everybody. Not, but we have a debate. We have a conversation. Sometimes I lose my head as a madman. Sometimes I don't. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, big up, man. Big up. Big up to everybody, man. Big up Hector. Yeah, big up Galloway on that win, man. On that win. Even though. There's certain things that I don't disagree with him. Uh, sorry, I, I disagree with him fundamentally, but at least, at least he'll give them, he'll, he'll give it to them in Parliament. But big up though. When we go back to this free Palestine, the genocide is still taking place. I hope they can get the ceasefire quickly, even though they're saying the ceasefire is only for six weeks, which is ridiculous. And then they start killing, so the people can eat, then they kill them after six weeks later. Mm. It's ridiculous, man. It's ridiculous. It's crazy what's going on in this world, man. It's absolutely, and all the cowardice nations out there, especially in the Arab world, Muslims, shame on you. Shame on you, absolute cowards standing by. And, and fuck all these kind of like, um, these sort of like, these Instagrammers and these social butterfly people on social media and that. You're all just mouth closed like that, little puppets. You're all owned. You've all been bought. You've all been owned. Honestly, that way we go. Pray for Palestine. But more than that, we, our hearts are with Palestine. Big up, Jarvis. And big up to the Norwegian organisations who are doing their bit. Love and light, people. F. Glazer. F. Jim the Rat, Judas. And F. These players who are not listening and now they're leaking against and hard. Yeah. But we'll talk about that more. That's the topic that we missed out. But we'll talk about it tomorrow night for the match preview. Love and light, people. Take care. Good night. Good night. Love, light, and liberty.